Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting Redshift tutorial. I'm Liam Clisham, and today we're going to talk about X particles and Redshift. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much. I announced it on the live stream last week, and I want to say thank you again today that I just broke 500 subscribers here on YouTube, and that's just awesome. I know it's not a huge number, but for me, that's pretty great. Um, I probably wouldn't be doing an X particles tutorial today if it wasn't for the comments and the interaction you guys are doing. You guys have been emailing me on the live streams, you're leaving comments and interacting that way. And then also on all the videos that we've been posting, you've been leaving comments. And this is one of the top uh, requests that I've seen. So um, I try to make it as easy as possible. This tutorial is only about five minutes long. And so because of that, this is the first time I've done this. I've actually included the project files below. There's three camera setups for you guys, and also my Redshift layout for Cinema 4D. So I know some of you guys have been asking if you can have that as well. So I've included that too. It's just in the Gumroad link. It doesn't cost you anything, it's completely free. If you've got an extra buck or two and you wanna throw it at me, that's cool too. But really, it's free for you guys. Just, I, I appreciate everything you guys have been doing and interacting with me, um, and I wanna keep it going. So with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at X particles inside Redshift. All right, so now we're inside Cinema 4D, and I'm gonna be using the third shot that you probably saw in the intro video and the promo that was released last week. So, in my scene, I've already built this X-Particle system, and I've cached it. So if you're looking to learn X-Particles at all, this isn't the tutorial for you. This is more along the lines of you know how to use X-Particles, but you want to start getting into using Redshift with it. So right here's our base emitter, our group. I've got a domain that's helping to resolve all these particles and the trails in this more organic fashion a wind modifier, and then the cache that I already mentioned. So the best way to get started is I'm gonna go ahead and show the trail first. We go and click on that, go down to Redshift, Object, and you'll see it already has curve selected. And what the curve is, is it's gonna take all these trails and apply a hair strand to this. So it's thinking of the trail as a curve or as a spline. We'll set it to that, and you'll see now we get our display going. And that's really too thick. I'm thinking something more along the lines of maybe 0.125. And that seems about right. Maybe maybe 0.2 is a little bit better. Just a little bit more weight to it. And I've already got a material on there. The materials don't have to be anything special. Just because it's on hair um, doesn't mean you have to use a redshift hair material i'm using just a regular one with some slight emission and uh, like plastic defaults nothing special and to get the particles showing up you're going to do the same thing we can go into redshift tags redshift object and we get particles so there's quite a few in this drop down here so under mode we get disabled which of course means nothing's going to show up we have point instances which means we're gonna get little points. They kinda of get shown as spheres, but they're actually points. They're not fully spherical. Sphere instances, which actually are spheres. So this is how I got our spheres in the video that you saw at the beginning. Quads, which are gonna be just four-sided squares. Custom objects, so if you wanted to pull in, say, uh, we could do a torus, and I'm going to scale this down to about like 50, and maybe the pipe, pipe radius will be about 5, and that's probably still too big. How about try 5? Alright, and we'll just leave the pipe radius as is, and we can go into our redshift tag here, sorry, right here, and drag our torus in here. And now it's using that, and it's all instance too. It's not using actual geometry. You can see all of our points over here, and so it's keeping it really lightweight. Uh, the the way you get variety in the size. Let me just scale this down a little bit more so I can show that. We'll do one and like 0.25 here. You can see there's a little bit of variety in here, and that's done in my group through the scale and scale variance. So if you want to add any variety, that's where you're going to control it. And that's all baked into your cache, so if you do update this, you'll have to rebake your cache uh, before it really starts to take effect. So I'm not going to adjust those settings right now since I'm using a cache bake, 
or a baked cache. Um, but you can see as I move through, it very quickly updates because everything is just instances. And that's pretty much how you get started using Redshift. It, I, this is what, a four minute tutorial? It's really easy. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just set it back to sphere instances. Down here, if you do regular spheres, I believe it will actually generate geometry, not necessarily in your scene here, but uh, upon export. So it might make your scene a little bit heavier. Um, so just keep that in mind, but uh, that's it. And so if you wanna add more details to anything, you just create a material. Like I said, this one is just a simple material. I'll bring it up. And if you look in here, I've just got some basic plastic settings and then in overall I've added some emissions uh, so it kind of has some glow going on with it. I can update that in post and then in this one here I think this is just copper. Yeah it's just a copper preset nothing fancy um, and then I rendered it out and took it into After Effects and just added a little bit more contrast and glow effect to this and just tweaked it a bit. That's it. So if you have any questions, reach out to me at underscore F-I-V-E 531 on Twitter or Liam at 531.com. Also, BroGraph at BroGraph.com. They're really good at telling me what questions you guys are asking and what you want to see for tutorials. Also, just leave a comment below or like or subscribe and uh, let me know that way. You can just tell me, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to use X particles with a custom AOV or things like that. And I'll look into it. And if it seems like a lot of people are asking it, then I'll make a tutorial for it. Like I said in the beginning, you guys are really driving this channel. And thank you so much. I'll see you soon.